Hi, my name is Julianne Cost, and in the next few minutes, we're going to discover the power of profiles in Lightroom Classic. So a profile is a set of instructions that determines how the information in a file is processed. I like to think of them as setting the base interpretation of the image. They're the starting point for all of my other adjustments. They're non-destructive and they can be changed at any time without any loss of quality. And because profiles can use color lookup tables to remap colors and tones, they can process images in new and unique ways. We're going to start by looking at some of the profiles designed specifically to work with raw files. I'll tap the D key in order to move to the develop module. And to make profiles more accessible, they've been relocated. They used to be in the calibration panel, but they're now at the top of the basic panel. The default profile for raw files is Adobe Color. Now, if you're looking at an image and it's not set to Adobe Color by default, most likely one of two things is happening. Either you're working with a JPEG file or a TIFF file or a PSD file, or maybe an image that you captured on your phone, in which case the profile will just say color or default because you can't apply a raw profile to a JPEG or a TIFF or a PSD file. Or you might be working with a legacy file, in which case you'll see the previously embedded profile, which you can choose to change at any time, but Lightroom Classic isn't going to change it because we don't want to change the look of an image that you've already processed. So Adobe Color. This profile was designed to be a great starting point for any image. And the goal of the profile is to render a relatively neutral baseline image that closely matches the original colors and tones in the original scene so that you can then refine the image and achieve the exact look that you want. The Adobe Color Profile has several improvements over the previous default profile. It's a bit warmer in the reds and yellows and oranges, and it renders skin tones better. It has a very small increase in contrast as well as a slight adjustment for memory colors, and it does a better job of moving highlights between color spaces. Now, if I change the treatment to black and white, the profile is automatically set to the new Adobe Monochrome Profile. This profile is designed to be the best starting point for any black and white image, and the profile slightly shifts colors as they're converted from color to grayscale. It brightens the warmer colors and it darkens the cooler colors. It also adds a small amount of contrast, but like the Adobe Color Profile, it allows a lot of headroom for editing. There are additional Adobe Raw profiles that were created as starting points for specific types of images, which we can access by clicking on the Profile Browser. Let's take a look at the group of Adobe Raw profiles. The first two, the Adobe Color and Adobe Monochrome, are the defaults that we just discussed. Now we can preview a profile by hovering the cursor above it, but we need to click in order to apply that profile. And every raw image must have a profile, and it can only have one profile at a time. So clicking on one profile will remove the one that was previously applied. Now let's take a look at how these raw profiles differ from the defaults. The Adobe Landscape profile adds a bit more saturation to all of the colors in an image and enhances the blues and greens. While this profile adds a slight amount of contrast to the overall image, it also helps to maintain details by slightly compressing the highlights and shadow values in scenes with significant contrast. Adobe Neutral reduces color saturation as well as contrast, rendering a flatter version of the image. It's designed to give you the most headroom to make your own edits, and it's a great profile to start with if you have an image with delicate colors and gradients. The Adobe Portrait Profile is tailored especially for portrait images. It has a slightly more gentle tone curve, and it renders really nice skin tones. The Standard V2 was the default profile in previous versions of Camera Raw, and Adobe Vivid adds vibrance and contrast while still rendering natural skin tones, so it's a good place to start for images that have people inside a landscape. Okay, let's close Adobe Raw. The next group of profiles are camera matching profiles. These were created by Adobe, and these profiles are designed to match the preset styles that can be set using the menus on the camera. Now, because the style options differ among camera manufacturers, this list of profiles will change depending on your camera. 
Underneath that, we've got the legacy raw files, and they're just included in order to maintain backwards compatibility when working with legacy files. Below the divider are several groups of creative profiles. Now, these profiles are designed to apply more of a stylistic effect to an image rather than set a neutral starting point. And they can be applied not only to RAW files, but also to JPEG or TIFF or PSD files. So in the artistic category, you can see that the profiles are designed to be much more edgy. They typically have much stronger color shifts. Now, when I apply a creative profile, I can use the amount slider in order to fine tune the profile. So I can either tone it down a bit or I can really amplify it. Below artistic are all of the different black and white profiles. In order to see a few more of these, I'm going to click and just make this panel on the right hand side a little larger so that I can see additional previews. And we can see that some of these profiles are going to increase the contrast on the images. Some of them are going to decrease the contrast on images. We've got some profiles that will limit the dynamic range by lifting the blacks in the images. And we have some that emulate the effects of using color filters with film. All right, underneath black and white are a number of modern profiles. Now, these were designed to create unique effects that kind of fit in with the current photography styles. And underneath modern, we have vintage. These profiles are designed to replicate the effects of analog imagery. If you install third party profiles, they will appear underneath this list. Now, as you find profiles that you like, you can click on the star icon in order to add them to your favorites. If you want to remove an image at any time from the favorites, just click on that star icon again. You can also view profiles not only as a grid, but you can see them larger, or you can view them as a list. Of course, when we roll our cursor over the list, it will go ahead and preview those profiles. When we're done, I'll go ahead and click close in order to close the profile browser. Now remember, the profile is just a starting point and we can change the profile at any time. In fact, we can quickly access our favorites from the list right here. I'll go ahead and change this to landscape for now. Now your profiles are completely independent from all of the other controls in Lightroom. And what I mean by that is that once you applied a profile, I can still use any of the other controls in any of the other panels to make additional modifications to my image. So for example, I could come in here and bring my highlights down or maybe bring my shadows up or I could go and add a vignette or use any of these other panels. Your profiles are never going to change the sliders. A profile is a profile and the sliders are the sliders. So you can save a profile as part of a preset. So let's say I really like the Adobe Landscape profile. However, I want to create a preset that includes this profile as well as makes a change to the sky in the image. In order to do that, I'll use HSL. Under Saturation, I'll grab my Targeted Adjustment tool and I'll click and drag down to remove some of the saturation from the sky. Then to save the profile as well as the changes in HSL, I'll click the plus icon for presets, give the preset a name, and just check the treatment and profile as well as the color adjustments. Once I've created this preset and I move to another image, applying not only the profile but also the HSL adjustments is as easy as clicking on the preset. So as you can see, Profiles in Lightroom Classic can help you to either establish a neutral starting point or apply creative effects to your images. I'm Julianne Cost. Thanks for watching.